Hello everyone and welcome to another entry in our community cast series. In this match, we're going to have a showdown between the Altos Elfos, led by Chikifko, and they're going to be facing off against the Imperio, led by the Angry Beaver. So let's jump right into this match, guys, and have some fun. So for the High Elves and the Tale of the Tape, it looks like they do indeed have a Lord atop a mighty Walmart dragon, and it looks like it's a princess. So just like the Wood Elves, the High Elves do have a, a melee option for a standard Lord, as well as a ranged option, and the princess is actually the ranged variant. So if we look at her abilities here, let's go ahead and check just to refresh us since we don't see it terribly often. She does have the volley of arrows and three charges on a 90 second cooldown. So it looks like it's an armor piercing kind of a, I think it's a little bit more AOE than Arrow of Kernis. Arrow of Kernis seems to be more kind of a single target focused, whereas this seems to be a little bit more AOE from the times I've seen it, but perhaps we'll be uh, proved wrong. So the main reason he probably brought the princess on the dragon, especially the cheaper dragon, because if you're going to go with a princess, I think you probably want to go with like a cheaper flying mount, because mainly I think he's going to be using this loose buff. So I guess she does have pretty good combat stats in melee as well, but the loose buff gives plus 10 reload skill to all nearby missile units. And if you can see the rest of the High Elf army, you see a bunch of archers here. So it looks like four archers, two groups of Lothar and Sea Guard, so a very, very heavy missile army. So definitely going to be trying to net some value from that princess and the reload value. On top of that, in the back, he does have two groups of the Swordmasters of Hoeth, who make pretty quick quick, uh, quick work of state troops and, you know, great swords and things like that. He does have to be careful to make sure they don't take any heavy cav charges or take any focus fire from the Witch Hunters over here. Witch Hunters actually have really, really good armor-piercing missiles, so definitely some, you know, some counterplay options. But, you know, if he's going to be going fisticuffs with the state troops, I definitely think the Swordmasters will do pretty darn well. On top of that, he does have two nobles, so one noble here and one noble here as well. So opting not to bring a caster, which from my experience, I always feel like is a bit of a mistake. Like there's no reason not to bring a caster. I mean, I guess going with the double double noble does give you a bit of a power spike in regards to like hero dueling and things like that. But having Apotheosis and Tempest against the Empire, I just think it's so darn good. But two nobles right here, anti-large, armor piercing. And if you mix them with like a group of spearmen, they're going to be very effective at fending off like uh, you know, Reichsguard and Royal Altar of Griffites and things like that. So, I mean, the nobles will be a good pick here. Uh, some spearmen in the front line, and it looks like that's pretty much it for the High Elves. So they're going to be relying very heavily on the Walmart Dragon to kind of buff these archers. I mean, the buff isn't like game-breaking or anything, but definitely some pretty good utility. She has decent missile attacks herself. So if she's facing off against like Balthazar Gel, who only has 50 armor, or the Witch Hunters who only have 30 armor, her missile attacks can do a lot of damage. And now for the Imperio, or the Empire, as uh, I just noticed that when I was loading up the game, I think it was like in the, in, uh, you know, the Spanish client, so... I saw the names there. So um, for the Empire, it looks like they do have a group of Outriders here. So Outriders and Pistoliers. Outriders, in my opinion, are definitely the superior pick in this matchup because, again, they uh, do very well against heavily armored targets, good at taking out dragons, Swordmasters, uh, you know, can do some decent work against Dragon Princes. Granted, Pistoliers are going to be pretty good against Illyrian Reavers and things like that because they do have low armor. So, you know, actually not a bad idea. We'll see how they go. So two Pistoliers here, some Outriders over here. And uh, for his Lord and kind of leadership contingent, he does have Balthazar Gelt. And it looks like he does, he's not going to be going with Final Transmutation, so a bit of a mind game. And actually what he does have is going to be incredibly powerful against this High Elf Army composition. So he has the Searing Bolts and also the Hounds of Gannis, which are pretty good against like blobbed up archers. And if you look at the High Elf Army composition, it's all archers over there. So, you know, not having Final Transmutation I usually think is the optimal pick, but here it's going to be really punishing for sure against those uh, blobs of High Elf archers. Two Witch Hunters, very, very good choice in pretty much every matchup. You can spam Accusation, it has no charges, and it's basically like a Spirit Leech effect, and uh, they also have really good armor-piercing attacks. Definitely solid stuff. Some Heavy Cav in the back, Reichsguard here, and Empire Knights, who had he like brought Dragon Princes or things like that, they would have had some trouble, but in this kind of build here with like a very heavy core of archers and you know a relatively immobile High Elf army, they're going to be pretty uh, nice for battlefield control. The rest of the Empire forces are state troops, so front line of swordsmen, which I always like. Pretty durable against archers. They can hold their own against spearmen, which are more common than elite high elf infantry. And we'll see how they do. Two groups of great swords in the back, uh, handgunners, and one group of crossbowmen. So guys, let's see how this uh, this battle turns out. So it looks like there was a Hound of Gehennis going back here. So the Hound's jumping through the ranks, getting a little bit of a jump there on those Swordmasters of Hoeth. It doesn't look like they took out any models, but it did some HP damage, so... And that's the thing about Vortex abilities, they're so darn random, and if they don't have like huge bursts like Banishment, for example, which you're basically going to, you know, almost guarantee yourself a little bit of value out of the gates, it's it's often, it's pretty tough to justify bringing things like that. But still, kudos for trying it. It looks like Balthazar Gelt did take some fire when he came in there, so a little bit tough. And in the meantime, the uh, Pistoliers are going to be circling and trying to get an angle, but it looks like the Archers are easily able to fend them off. So a ton of Skirmish units. So Outriders, Pistoliers over here, and then actually there was two more that we missed on the far side. So that is going to be a lot of stopping power. And the Princess on the Walmart Dragon actually only has 50 armor, so the Pistoliers are going to be very, very strong against her. So I guess uh, for some reason I thought the Dragon had a little bit more, but I think the Star Dragon has like 80. 
But anyways, we're going to fast forward as there is some posturing as the Empire army does advance here. You can see the Witch Hunter's taking some uh, Archer fire, trying to bait it. You can see he's like running side to side, which, uh, you know, it definitely takes away from the Archers a little bit. And now right is on the high ground of the Pistoliers trying to come in as the forces advance. But now the Empire forces are going to advance. And the High Elf Archers, even against like, you know, the Shielded Swordsmen, they're just going to take a ton of damage. High Elf Archers have very good range, and I don't know if they're getting the reload skill. I think the ones on the far side of the formation might be from the Walmart Dragon, but... Aside from that, state troops are really getting cut down pretty hard, and they are going to meet their end in the swamp, but this is very good. As long as these swordsmen are the ones taking the damage, it's definitely going to be a little bit more optimal here. So, the Hounds of Gehenna is jumping through the lines here, not rotating the best direction. He's definitely been pretty unlucky with that, but look at that searing bolt right there. That actually is really good. I mean, that's a ton of damage, and, uh, you know, you can overcast it to get, I think, a greater radius. So, the Empire troops in the front, the swordsmen and the guys are going to be advancing. You can see the spearmen. Looks like they're going to be pulling back and being replaced by the Swordmasters of Hoeth. So, the Hoeth the Hoth boys are going to get in there and just massacre these state troops. I mean, they have that anti-infantry bonus and, like, really, really just good combat stats. So these swordsmen, probably not going to last terribly long. And it looks like there's a noble coming up to help as well. So just a bit of a shifting of the formation right now. So all the archers are pulling back. Swordmasters of Hoth are going in first. And it looks like he's going to be using the spearmen to defend the back line a little bit more. In the meantime, Balthazar Gelt's having to be really careful because this uh, Walmart Dragon Princess has just been able to, well, let's call it, we'll call her the Walmart Princess. She's been able to snipe Balthazar pretty effectively. You can see some of these uh, handgunners getting some good fire over here, but the archers will probably be able to turn and shoot. So now that the High Elves have pulled most of their formation back, you can see all the archers retreated past the front line. The Swordmasters are getting in there, but Accusation, just check this out. So this Witch Hunter is just sitting here and just capping these guys. Accusation doing a ton of damage, and it looks like Balthazar is about to do a bombardment as well, so very, very good use there. And man, that bombardment is actually not doing bad against those Swordmasters. They took a lot of damage. They're pretty much almost done. This other group of Swordmasters over here was able to push off the Swordsmen, so the Empire is going to have their backline compromised a little bit. It doesn't look like they have any extra troops here to deal with this, and it looks like the Hounds of Gehenna is going down, so... Yeah, man, that was that was actually a good cast. He was like right in the middle of those archers, and man, that barely did any damage. Granted, it is a dirt cheap ability. Like I think it costs like five or six wounds of magic. So very well by the how very well played by the high elf player here, grabbing the Walmart dragon and going after the witch hunters. The witch hunters are probably the, like hands down the biggest threat to his army right now. They can pretty much deal with everything. The archers will be able to punish the witch hunters, but man, it's too bad he wasn't able to finish that guy off. Granted, I think he had to retreat because the hand gunners and Balthazar Gelt were nearby, and you know the princess is starting to get a little bit low. So on the backside here, the archers are kind of uh, forming ranks, but it looks like the Empire Skirmishers are trying to get in there. Spearmen putting up a nice little screen. And where did those Empire Heavy Cav go? It looks like there are some uh, Reichsguard here who took some damage, I'm not sure, maybe from some of these spears. And in the front line, it looks like the Empire Knights did get a decent little charge, probably on some of those uh, Swordmasters who were fighting. But now they're kind of caught up among spears, and oh man, they're about to get rear charged. Oh, the Swordmasters actually are back. So they get a rear charge on these Empire Knights and uh, should be able to do some pretty good work. But where's that friendly fire? Oh, I thought that was friendly fire, but it looks like the uh, the Empire Crossbowmen are still fighting, despite the heavy, very heavy presence of the High Elf Archers. So High Elf Archers are doing their best to fend off these Skirmisher units, so the Pistoliers here are shooting down some of these uh, these uh, spearmen. Spearmen are very lightly armored, and they do have silver shields, but Pistoliers shoot so many. They actually shoot twice, I think, like for each volley, like each representation of the stats that you see. So against light armor, they can really cut things out pretty quick. But the Lothran Sea Guard are going to be screening in the front with their spears and their anti-large bonus, and then the other archers are just uh, going to be shooting them down pretty effectively here. The Empire player does have some Pistoliers, but it's probably not worth charging. They only have like 14 melee defense, and the High Elf Archers can actually just beat them up in melee, which is pretty sad <clears throat> in terms of just like raw combat stats. So over here, the Noble is on the hunt. So the Nobles have been going after the Witch Hunters. It looks like Balthazar and this Witch Hunter are going to be trying to take him out. And the Noble does have anti-large. So the Witch Hunter is an infantry size model, but Balthazar is not. So if the Noble starts laying a smack down on Balthazar, that's going to be a little bit scary. Some karate kicks coming in from the Witch Hunter. He's uh, throwing that boot at the Noble, but the Noble's relatively tanky. I think he has 100 armor, and neither of these guys have good AP in melee. So I think the Noble's going to be able to two versus one those guys pretty easily. A lot of state troops in the back are rallying. It looks like 46 swordsmen and 22 here. Bounce of power is still very, very even. Empire skirmishers in the high ground. The outriders are in an okay position, shooting at the Lothar and Seaguard. Who are they? The shielded variant? It looks like they're not. And uh, yeah, so all these archers and uh, no, no shields on those Lothar and Seaguard. So in the front, the swordsmen still putting up a good fight despite a relatively rough initial engagement here. Empire does have a Tan Gunners online, so they might be able to pick off this Walmart Dragon. And he's probably wishing that he had the final transmutation right now, but it was definitely cool seeing some of the other abilities in effect here. And it looks like the Witch Hunter is going to be fleeing, leaving the Supreme Patriarch on his own. He's definitely going to want to get out of here. 112 speed, so he should be able to turn and flee, but it looks like he may have forgotten. So Balthazar is going to have to flee right now, guys, and the nobles are hot in pursuit. So despite that relatively rough loss over here, Balthazar should rally, and uh, he probably still has some decent wins of magic, uh, considering he has the Staff of Lawns and all that kind of good stuff. The state troops are looking very tattered, and the Hives do have a decent pocket of archers and things like that. The Walmart Dragon is actually... Oh man, I did not notice this. So the Walmart Dragon gets chased off the battlefield by the Pistoliers. 
And, uh, you know, against that 50 armor, like I said, they're going to be doing some huge damage. So the Pistoliers of the Empire able to chase it off. So a little bit even. Balthazar's still alive. Nobles obviously aren't going to be able to do anything to him up in the air, but there are a ton of archers left. But Emma's looking a little bit sparse. These great swords have pushed through, and they're uh, fighting some of these spearmen, or actually Lothar and Seaguard. So this is great uh, for the Empire, that is. They're going to be getting that anti-infantry bonus and a couple other, you know, pertinent stats here. They're putting up a good fight, but the Hive's also uh, getting some spearmen in there to kind of defend and hold the line. And if an archer unit, <clears throat> excuse me, has to fight here, I mean, these guys do have 32 melee defense. Their martial prowess is obviously gone, but in terms of their defensive stats, it's still not bad at all. So the Empire is coming back with some pistoliers. It looks like another Hounds of Gehenna is coming down from Balthazar Gelt. So let's see how this one does. So the Hounds just kind of dancing madly between the two groups. Let's see if they jump over onto the archers. And they do, but it's a little bit late. We also get a bombardment coming down. And man, that did, that did great damage. I am impressed by that ability. And I think I'm actually going to go on ladder after this and try it out a little bit more. So the Half Archers are turning ranks and trying to take out the Greatswords, realizing they're one of the biggest threats. Uh, obviously something that can munch through the Spearmen and a lot of the very tattered troops that are still left on the battlefield. Empire has a heavy contention of Pistoliers who are getting a position here, probably to start shooting over there into that blob. And this is a this pretty desperate fight over here. We have how many swords? We got 34 here. Looks like 25 Greatswords. They should be able to finish off those Spears probably with the Greatswords, maybe. I mean, their HP is only 750, but Balthazar is relatively safe, which is nice for the Empire. In the back, it looks like the Nobles are uh, going to be chasing off some archers, and I think he actually just finished off one of the Witch Hunters, and that's why he was so far over there on the battlefield. So the Witch Hunters are offline. Now it's just basically Balthazar Gelt versus a couple Nobles and some of these Swordsmen and great swords. so a very, very even fight. Bounce of Power just now going out from the middle here, so I don't know if that's enough to call it like a huge advantage, but definitely a little bit of an advantage there. And the archers here are getting charged down by Pistoliers, which is always desperate, you know, when these two types of units start to fight in melee, you know, the battle is very pitched. But the Empire has a lot of state troops, and the High Elf archers are starting to look a little bit thin. So we have Lothar and Seaguard here. Um, as far as the rest of the High Elf troops, there are some more archers up here on the high ground. It looks like 26 models are having to flee. So this part of the battlefield has essentially been claimed for the Emperor. You can see that the Great Swords here, uh, 25, we have 38 here. It looks like, uh, yeah, I mean, their HP is very low, but again, that's still a sizable model count who do have shields. So these archers that are kind of rallying probably won't be able to do a whole lot. So at this point, we're going to fast forward. You can see the pistoliers on the forest are just kind of hunting down these remaining troops and just, uh, you know, shooting their pistols as they charge in on these guys. And I mean, just with sheer numbers, they should be able to overwhelm these Lothian Seaguard, who are at four leadership right now, negative two. They're wavering and most likely are going to break. So pistoliers, yeah, solid unit. I mean, man, they've been making a comeback in the metagame ever since, uh, you know, the mighty Dob plays showed me them. So the Reichsguard here are going to be charging in. It looks like they do have 12 models and 577 HP. So they're going to be charging down some of these Spearmen here who it looks like. I think the Spearmen are trying to get against the wall to Caddy so they can't get surrounded and maybe they can hold a little bit longer. So they turn and I think they were able to brace. It looks like they did brace for that charge. They weren't moving and they were standing in formation even though their Spears weren't up. But yeah, I think they were actually braced. They didn't take a lot of damage there. So they're easily going to be able to dispatch these Reichsguard, I think, with their anti-large bonus. Granted, their leadership is at 14, the Reichsguard are at 48, but their HP is rapidly going down here. You can see just these little pokes, and you can see the Empire player realizing there is a threat there that's going to be retreating. But the biggest issue being is that there's two nobles that are full health, and nobles are not pushovers. They have 100 armor, really good leadership, decent speed, uh, good sustained combat stats, and it's going to be tough. And they also do have the Deadly Onslaught, which is going to give them uh, additional combat stats. So the Empire Pistoliers are coming back. Balthazar is still alive, but his abilities that he has are pretty much useless for combat, so... The best thing he could probably do is just, I don't know, maybe just chase things off the battlefield while the state troops try and grind, you know, just grind down these nobles. The Empire, or the Reichsguard are going to be charging into the noble here. You can see two of the Reichsguard actually get taken out on that initial charge. The Lance and Shield, where was the horse and the rider? And you can see they actually just get uh, punished there pretty hard by that noble. So the noble doing a pretty good job. 58 kills. The other one is coming back from the Shadow Realm. So we're going to fast forward as this is a little bit attritious. The Epistoliers coming in, getting some great shots right there. And they have... Pretty solid ammunition, and it looks like the High Elves are able to get some archers up on the high ground, and they're going to start raining fire down. The Nobles just completely break the state troops. Balthazar Gelt is actually even wavering, and I think, yeah, this is going to be tough. Can the Empire salvage this situation with these Pistoliers and Balthazar? So Balthazar, the Supreme Patriarch, is going to be landing and probably cycle charging some of these archers, which I think is a really good choice. He might have enough for another bombardment. We'll see. He's flying up in the air. He does use the Arcane Conduit and the Staff of Valons. So let's see if the Patriarch can pull it out here with one of the, I think it's called the Burning, not Burning Bolts, what is that called? Searing Doom, I think? Yeah, that's the name of the ability. So the Pistoliers up on the high ground, trying to pick off that Noble, but I don't know if the Empire has the stopping power. I mean, some of these state troops are rallying over here, but this is it. I mean, this, you know, little battle you guys see on the high ground is pretty much all they have left. It looks like the Archers only have one volley left, and the Pistoliers are pretty good on ammunition. So the Empire forces could potentially be sitting here and just shooting. It looks like there's going to be a Searing Doom coming down. 
So 760 HP is rapidly going to be tanking down to about, yeah, looks like it only did like 90, 80 damage, give or take. So not the best, because again, there's not too many models left to be hit. So in the first place, it's not going to be terribly strong. So Balthazar lurking up in the air, cycle charging those troops. Well, I guess just charging. There is no cycling yet. So Balthazar might come in for another charge. Pistoliers are kiting back, but the nobles do catch the Pistoliers and are able to chase them off the battlefield. It looks like they're shattered. These ones are shattered as well. And the Supreme Patriarch looks like he meets his end by the Blade of the Noble. So what a wild game. I mean, we got to see some unusual abilities for sure, seeing like the, the freaking uh, Hounds of Gannis. And you got to give uh, the Angry Beaver props for trying that. that. That's a tough one to make work for sure. But, uh, you know, he, he sure tried and uh, definitely made Balthazar Gelt proud. But, um, but yeah, I, I definitely liked El Chikifko's army as well. I definitely think a caster would have been good. But, I mean, the two nobles at the end really pulled it out and carried their weight. So, I mean, there is a case to be made. But I really think that had he had Tempest, for example, he could have just uh, Tempested Balthazar and sniped him out of the air with archers and everything. But, yeah, still good stuff. I liked his initial formation changing in the beginning, getting the Swordmasters, pulling the Spearmen back, and really letting these guys shine. Good accusation from the Empire as well, able to drag down some of these guys. But I think the moment when the Witch Hunters got caught by those, uh, those what's it called, by the uh, the Nobles was really tough. Like, losing those Witch Hunters was a massive blow because that was a lot of his stopping power. The, you know, he had great swords who can do some pretty good work. But aside from that, Pistoliers, although the Pistoliers really chipped down that uh, that, that Walmart Dragon Princess. That was pretty wild. So well played to both players, to Chikifko and Angry Beaver. Look forward to running into you guys again on ladder. I'm pretty sure I played both of these guys at one point or another. So... Always good to see familiar faces. So thanks again for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed, and we will see you guys next time.